The word of God spoken to Moses and Joshua resonates them. I have delivered them into your hands. The scene concludes with the utterance of Zechariah 2, 8. For thus the Lord of he sent me after glory to the nations, those despoil you, for he who touches you touches the apple of his eyes. God's love resides with Israel and he'll safeguard them until the end. This is a stern admonition to every kingdom and every nation that has planned to rise against Israel. You will meet destruction as righteousness meets the word of God. Gaza will be the first to witness this direct manifestation of his divine power, just as every kingdom and nation that opposes Israel will be doomed to the same fate, their demise sealed. Any opposition, whether it comes from Muslim or non-Muslim nations, will crumble under the weight of God's unwavering protection. Regardless of the severity of the trials they encountered, God consoled his chosen people with a profound yet simple phrase, fear not. This steadfast protection became evident during the time of the Babylonian captivity where the Israelites were exiled from their homeland. In their sorrow, God bestowed a hopeful message upon them. I have plans for you, plans that bring good and not ill, plans that will instill hope and a brighter future. As promised, he guided them back to their homeland. During Moses and Joshua's time, they faced and conquered formidable adversaries. God reassured Moses with a passage from Numbers 21:34, Do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand. Armed with this divine assurance, Moses emerged victorious. This episode clearly illustrates God's guiding hand and unwavering protection. God's divine intervention was also evident when he aided Joshua and delivered the king of Ai into Israeli hands. In Joshua 10, God assisted in the complete annihilation of the five kingdoms that conspired against Joshua. These kingdoms, along with other kingdoms from all cardinal directions, north, south, east and west that came against them, were utterly destroyed just as God had promised. Every adversary was defeated, none were spared. In Queen Esther's reign, God interceded through Esther and Mordecai when Haman attempted to exterminate the Jews. The Jews were saved from utter devastation in a miraculous act that is commemorated today in the Feast of Purim. During the Maccabean Revolt, Judas Maccabeus led a passionate group of Jews against the mighty Seleucid Empire that tried to suppress their faith. Despite insurmountable odds, they emerged victorious, reflecting God's assurance, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. These situations are just a few examples of God's ceaseless protection of his chosen people. Each trial endured, each victory achieved, each restoration resonates with God's promises to Israel. His message in times of hardship has always been clear, fear not for I am with you. These events are not merely historical facts, but divine interventions that demonstrate God's steadfast dedication to his chosen people. They serve as reminders that God is a protector, a savior and a restorer, a God who never breaks his promise. Deuteronomy 32, 11, 12 ties everything together perfectly. Like an eagle that stirs up its nest, that hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them, bearing them on its pinions, the Lord alone guided him, no foreign god was with him. In conclusion, Deuteronomy 33, 29 encapsulates the message, Blessed are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord. He is your shield and helper and your glorious sword. Your enemies will cower before you and you will tread on their heights. To the Christians, it's important to remember that the same God who walked with Israel is Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God. To believe otherwise is to stray from the truth of the gospel. As it is said in Isaiah 46, 4b, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. To the Muslims, Gentiles, Jews, and unbelievers, understand that the land of Israel belongs to the Israelites. Anyone who comes against them will face the divine wrath of God, as history has proven time and again. To further prove this point, let's take a look at Psalm 121, verses 4 to 5 and 7. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. So dear listener, ponder upon this divine narrative. Recall the scripture 1 Corinthians 10, 1, 4, where Paul clearly reiterates that it was Jesus Christ who was with the Israelites through their journey. 
He was the one who delivered the Ten Commandments as documented in Exodus 31, 18. Reflect on this eternal bond between God and Israel and recognize the divine protection that has been and will always be bestowed upon them. This story of God and Israel and how Jesus Christ was always there for his chosen people is a testament to God's unwavering love and protection. And now let us delve deeper into the narrative of history. It is evident that every kingdom and nation that has risen against Israel has faced its downfall. We see this in the case of Gaza and other nations, both Muslim and non-Muslim alike. This isn't just a mere coincidence or a sequence of random events. Rather, it's a divine decree, a manifestation of God's protection over Israel. It's a testament to his promise, as mentioned in Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. This divine decree, this pattern of downfall of Israel's adversaries is not a threat, but a reaffirmation of God's unwavering love and protection for his chosen people. It's a stark reminder that God's promises are eternal, unchanging, and will always come to pass.